Hey folks, this is Mike from KEI Fabrication. This is my LS swapped Mazda V2200. If you're new to my channel, go back and check out some of the modifications we've done to this to make it a road racer, a circle track racer, and a drag racer. It's in the process of undergoing some more transformations. You'll see updates on that soon. All right, folks. One of the things I never did with this truck was hook up the emergency brake cables. I did buy all new cabling for the Ford Explorer rear disc brakes, and, and that's this cable here. The factory Mazda cable used to come in here, and it was supported by a bracket here. And I'm going to kind of replicate that bracket, but I'm going to put a provision on it to receive the um, Ford Explorer style coupling at the end. And then one of the reasons why I've never done this is I've kind of been stressing over how exactly am I going to connect the Mazda cable to the Ford cable. I've got a couple of things in mind. I'm going to experiment with it and see what happens. I'll keep you posted how it goes. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make a I'm going to measure the diameter of this component that plugs into a bracket. I'm going to fabricate that. I'm going to put it in position and then I'll measure and I'll actually weld some tabs to attach to that bracket. It has to be fairly stout. So um, I'm going to make it out of some pretty big material. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to well ahead of time grind this area so I get rid of the grease and the paint so when I am ready to attach whatever I have fabricated for this connection point here I can quickly manufacture some tabs and uh, tack weld them in place then I can start running some testing the passenger side would be handled if that works the driver's side is actually uh, this black cable is the Ford Explorer cable and this uncovered cable is the Mazda one. So um, this is right in line with the factory. This actually was a bracket for the factory uh, Mazda brake cable guide. So I'm going to try and figure out a way to uh, connect this side as well. My experimentation will go on with the passenger side first and then we'll hook up the driver's side and then the stock Mazda control for the emergency brake should work. One of the reasons why I'm doing this now first of all I've been dreading it up to this point because I knew it would take some time to focus on it and get it to work right. The second aspect of it is the inspection is running out on this next month so I want to make sure that uh, when I go through the inspection uh, the emergency brake is the only thing that I haven't resolved in terms of inspection. Everything else on the truck, brand new exhaust, brand new brakes, every single front suspension component is brand new. The tires are 75% or better. It's quiet. It's old enough to where it doesn't have to go through emissions anymore. It's just a safety inspection. So. Um, you know the lights the wipers and everything else so anyway I want to make sure that when whoever does the inspection comes in and tests the e-brake it works um, every piece of hardware in the rear braking system for the emergency brake is brand new so I'm hoping when I make the connection uh, and get it adjusted appropriately we'll be in good shape so I'm gonna turn the camera off I'm gonna grind this away I'm gonna start fabricating this bracket and you'll see what it all looks like once I get it tacked together.
Alright folks, uh, what I'm trying to do here is to make a emergency brake cable for the passenger side to hook up from Mazda to Ford Explorer. So what I noticed was this is the connection point for the Mazda under the truck and what I noticed is it was exactly like a clevis from a sailboat and I double checked this in the hardware on the truck and it fits perfectly this used to go in here to attach it to the chain plate on the sailboat and there's a stainless turnbuckle and my plan is to actually replace the cable portion that connected the Mazda hardware to the rear brake cable with a solid rod and the reason why is there's plenty of room in there and the way that I welded it in the Ford Explorer bracket for the cable it's a straight shot from this hardware to the cable bracket so um, this is where the end of the cable is supposed to be and this is similar to the factory connection method for a emergency brake cable. This is thick wall DOM tubing. I'm going to make this clevis end go inside of this tube and the factory Ford Explorer cable which I'm um, borrowing this junk cable to uh, just for explanation the factory Ford Explorer cable will hook in here just like the factory connection point and I can do my emergency brake adjustment as far as tension in case I miscalculate the length of this and I'll have almost two inches of adjustment here and then there's another inch and a half under the dash for adjustment so I'm going to try it. Um, I think this is much safer than trying to figure out a way to attach two cut cables together. Um, I know that the cable clamps that you put around it and put together slip. Um, I've tried many, many times because I don't own a crimper tool to crimp the ends on these similar to what's done here. I don't own one of those but I have tried taking something like this and welding it um, with limited success and I wouldn't necessarily trust it for an emergency brake cable. This is all much more robust than the factory hardware. The cable that was normally inside of this system was actually um, much larger in size so this hardware is really designed to withstand thousands and thousands of pounds of load. Um, so it should be plenty strong enough to replace this short segment of this system. So um, yeah, when I recognize this, um, back when I was scrapping boats, uh, I had scrapped about three sailboats. And um, I've got a lot of the clevis hardware left over. And um, I was just kind of experimenting with different designs. So um, I ran down to uh, my storage area where I have a couple of masts with the standing rigging still on it. And sure enough, I had a whole bunch of clevises that were this arrangement. So I grabbed them. And I'm going to put this together and kind of mock it up and see how it goes. Uh, you know, it's all a matter of experimentation. I have like zero cost, just some time involved in this. And I have not modified the factory Mazda cable or ruined it, or I haven't modified or ruined the Ford Explorer cable yet. Well, folks, uh, I got the uh, emergency brake cable hooked up for the passenger side. I got a little bracket here with a tubular gusset on it to hold it in place. And the connection to the emergency brake cable uh, through that solid linkage is up here you can see the uh, turnbuckle for the connection and then the factory 
Mazda linkage or hardware is right there. So uh, I think the geometry will actually get better when I have equal tension in the cable system for the driver's side. And I'm going to use the same method tomorrow for the cable for the driver's side. So I'm pretty happy. I'm going to have an emergency brake cable back. All right, folks, I got the driver's side cable in place. You can see the linkage up there and some of the linkage heading towards the passenger side. I've tested it on the lift here. I'm about to go out in the driveway and see how this thing works. Um, so far I'm very encouraged. Um, so uh, let's go see how this thing works. try and figure out if there's an adjustment on these and uh, oh yeah there is sweet so I'm pretty sure that's why my emergency brake wasn't working you can see it was just barely scuffing the the rotor when I put it on when I put these together I did not hook the emergency brake cables up right away and I left them way conservative as far as the drag I didn't want any drag whatsoever so I'm going to uh, make the adjustment down here below. Hopefully that will solve this issue and we'll have a good emergency brake. Alright folks, I just did the adjustment on the um, factory adjuster on the um, brake adjuster. It's very similar to a standard rear drum setup. When I had put it together, um, I had done it completely closed and I opened it up probably three-eighths of an inch so there's a good reason why the um, uh, emergency brake just wouldn't come into play so uh, what I did was this is actually the lever that makes contact with this drum and once it makes contact with this shoe I should say uh, it forces this shoe out so I adjusted my emergency brake cables till this just came in contact with this shoe and then I did the remainder of the adjustment on that one down below and I put the drum, excuse me, the, the rotor on not used to having disc brakes on the rear so my uh, terminology is, is still uh, where I was so I put this on, I adjusted it until I couldn't put it on then I backed it off a little bit and I made sure that there was no drag so any further adjustment now, I have plenty of adjustment left in my mechanism up front. This should be good. The e-brake works fantastic. I got both wheels locking up. This is gravelly pavement, if you will. But uh, for the most part, I'm really impressed. It works out nice. 